Yes. So let me tell you a little bit about Raffi. Raffi is a 30-year-old nonprofit based in North Carolina. Our mission is to challenge the root causes of unjust food systems. We advocate for sustainable, equitable, and just food systems. Now, the Farmers of Color Network um, is my department. Uh, we provide farmer-led technical assistance and funding opportunities. We also host farm tours, networking events, and gatherings to highlight ancestral traditions and knowledge. We serve farmers of color in the Southeast, Lower Mid-Atlantic, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. So again, my name is Bianca. I'm the coordinator on the call. We also have Carolina and we have Otis. Here's all of our contact info. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, Carolina's in the, um, handles the Caribbean. Otis handles, you know, further in the Mississippi area. And um, I'm based in North Carolina and Virginia. So welcome everybody, welcome in. We're happy to have you here. We're ready to get started. I'm gonna pass it over to Otis. All right, um, thank you, thank you. I um, wanna thank you all for showing up this evening. We do appreciate you. We understand that you are busy. Uh, I'm a farmer too, so I know there's something that you could be out there doing. Um, and so we're not gonna hold you long, but we wanna, uh, wanna say thank you again for attending this. And let me tell you a little bit about this guy who we got speaking this evening. His name is Mr. Percy Baldwin. Um, he is the manager at the Alcorn State Vegetable Processor up in Marks, Mississippi. Uh, I've been knowing uh, Mr. Percy for now for over about 12 years now. Um, we decided to bring him on because he has a, a wealth of knowledge when it comes down from the field to the harvesting and to the selling. Um, he has over, uh, I think, about 42 years of experience doing this, and so, uh, so we, so we definitely can. Uh, we hope that you be a sponge, that you soak up this good, this good information. Uh, we ask that you um, ask questions, you know, when it's time to, and uh, we're going to try to make sure all those get answered. And we'll, we'll also follow up after this in a couple of days. We'll also follow up with a survey of questions about how did you feel about the webinar and. You can give us some good feedback, and if you need any assistance, we also share our information once the webinar is over. So anyway, enough of me talking. We're going to let the speaker of the hour uh, talk. And uh, Mr. Percy Baldwin, as we say in the South, we're going to let you come in your own way. I appreciate everybody for giving me, I appreciate you guys for giving me the opportunity, first off, to be in here, do what you got. Um, I first want to talk a little bit about myself. I would, uh, my name is Percy Baldwin. I'm the facility manager of Alcorn State Process Facility in Marks, Mississippi. Uh, I worked for Allen County uh, uh, 32 years before I came over to the process facility here in Marks. Um, when I came here, we was, uh, the Alcorn State Process Facility was built to assist farmers to bring their product to the processing facility to be packed so the farmers won't have to sit on the side of the road and, and sell their product. And it was all going through Alcorn State Process Facility in Marks. So when I came on in 2011, I noticed that most farmers didn't really know how to go green. So I decided to do a pea project. I know all farmers could grow peas. So what we did, we, we come up in 2012 with the pea project and we was going to sell the peas to Walmart and Kroger. So our first, we had, we started out, we had 12 farmers in 2012. We sent 40 bushes of peas out to, uh, Kroger's and Walmart. But the first thing I did when we came on, I developed a relationship with all our farmers because so much stuff in these days, uh, you have to have a relationship built with farmers. So when they bring their product to the facility, we have to check and, and go ahead. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? we can hear you. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. yes we hear you. Okay. We when they bring their product to the facility, we we got a form that we fill out 
uh, we got to have the, the name, the address, and what field they come out. Because we have to have, if you have to have a recall, we need to know what field did it come out, who field it was. So I use color code to each farmer that bring their product to that I give them a different color code. And that's how we can recall all our products. Okay, and then the most important thing is having a relationship with the farmer. You get to go, I go visit the farmers, uh, talk to each one of my farmers, if each one have problems, I don't discuss my farmer's problem with each other. I just discuss my problem confidential with my farmers, that particular farm. Whatever, when they bring their produce to the plant, if something is wrong with their produce, I don't discuss it with nobody but them. If a farmer would bring peas to the process facility and the peas are dry, I know you might not understand what I'm saying. They might have stayed in the field too long and they couldn't get them out. You might have some green peas and dry peas mixed together. So I bought a thing called Ecolate. What it does is separate the green peas from the dry peas. The green peas we take and we'll ship out back up and send out to Kroger's and Walmart. And the dry peas, we will give back to the farmer so they can plant the next year if they keep them in the fruit, I mean, in the cooler, keep them cool so they can plant them the next year. Now, we grade our peas and stuff. We have A grade, B grade, and C grade. If we got an A grade, we know it can go out to the Walmart and Kroger store because we want it to at least stay in the store from seven to 10 days. After seven to 10 days, you will have to take the peas out and freeze them. Now, we sell to some stores that have their cooks in the stores. After seven days, if they're not, they don't be done sold their peas, so they'll take them and um, cook them on their menu. That way, the farmers will be in a win win situation where nobody never lose. So, if we have a C grade pea, We'll take it and we'll send it to the farmer's market or we will let farmers take the bring their peas. We will bag them up and give them back to them and they can keep them for themselves. Anybody got any questions so far? They follow me up. Okay. I'm gonna We're keep following. Going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Okay. Drop then it in we... the chat and we'll get to them at the end. Oh, okay, okay, that'd be fine. And then after that. We have, I, we have, during the winter months, when they're not working, we have, it's very important about food safety. In 2015, Walmart says that if we, if the farmers are certified, they don't want to take their product. But if we would teach them how to be certified and bring them through the processing plant, and the processing plant is certified, they would take out a piece. So that's what we has been doing, we've been teaching classes uh, to our farmer during the, uh, the winter months when they're not uh, harvesting stuff. And uh, we we have, sometimes we do them one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes we have uh, uh, we have groups come in, I at least try to bring between 25 and 40 in at one time. And then at the end of the program, we try to go like four, uh, four to six weeks with that. And then we give them a specific, a, a specific saying they had so many hours of training, and then they can bring that to the processing plant, and we can take their product because they had some training. And Walmart, it, Walmart and Kroger would accept that, but it's gonna come a time one day every farmer gonna have to be certified. So we got to, uh, we try our best to train our farmers. I go visit the farmers. I go and visit the farmers. Uh, before they bring their product to the processing plant, but they don't know that I'm coming. I have to go out there and try to make sure they follow up the rules so they can understand every farm is different. Every, every farm is different. People do different things on their farm. And so an uh, older farmer might not do what a younger farmer do. So we have to try to make sure everybody at, at on the same page. At the end of the day, they might not do it exactly like but at the end of the day, it's really the same thing they're doing, but they might do it on, on a different format. Okay. And then after that, what we do, we um 
bring the buyers in. I go to the buyers. I meet with the buyers. I talk to the buyers and come up with a price. We try to make sure our farmer make money. That's what it's all about, making money. So I get the best quote that I can for our farmer, even though if he's going to the farmer's market or we going to uh, Kroger's or Walmart, local stores, and I'm encouraging, I be trying to encourage my farmers to grow more because I, I'm a person like this. If I got to take stuff to a, a, a buyer, and if they want 40 cases a week, I want to make sure we get that 40 cases a week. I want to make sure everything is done right. I like I like being a winner. I want my farmer to be a winner. We want the best vegetables that we could possibly have. I mean, you know, at some some time at some point, the weather might not allow us to have the best. But we might have a beat rate, but we want to have, always have our farmer somewhere to go with. It. Now, when we started this pea project, there were some states that didn't take uh, but a certain amount of peas. But it doesn't matter to me if a farmer out there bring one bush of peas to me, I take it. I don't I didn't put no limitation on there because they out there trying and doing the best they can. And I don't want to leave no farmers behind me. And that's the way I do things. Uh, I mean, I don't worry about no, how nobody else do things because that one bushel that I would have not took might have been need to make my order. So that's the way I go about doing things. And if I did take the bushel and I had more, I share to the farmer's market. So we're still in a win-win situation. We don't want to leave no farmers behind. We don't want no farmer to feel like they don't they're not wanted, and they can't. They can't produce. Okay. We we go and meet. I go to Memphis and meet with Provost. I do all the uh, negotiating. I get the best price for our farmers. I know a lot of people don't understand. We could probably get more for our peas than we get, but when we have. Uh, stores that come pick up their own product. And when they come to the processing plant and when they leave with it, they have to pay for it. it, it it's theirs. When, I, when they sign off on it, it's theirs. So it's not like if we was calling up there and we have an accident, didn't have no insurance or something could go wrong, we would be responsible for it. So by the, 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 the stores and the uh, the buyers come pick up their own product. We could able to give them a little break on the price for their liability of anything would happen to the product. We try to get the best price for our farmers. Uh, I don't have any farmers with any complaints that I've been uh, doing this for all corn for uh, 13 years. I ain't 21 no more, but I, as long as the Lord give me strength, I'm going to stick with my farmers and keep them uh, trying to move forward and, and, and keep teaching them. We can't never teach them enough. It's all about learning and respect. And when we do that, we will, have, we will be success because we want the best product leaving our, uh, wherever we're leaving from. But I mean, if you're leaving from a shed or uh, when you're carrying stuff to the stores, we want the best looking product that we can have. Now, I might say this, and I might be wrong for saying this, but if you was married and you and your wife go to a store and you see some peas out there, you have a full section of peas, that lady wants the best looking peas that she see. They want the best looking stuff. It might not be the better stuff, but they want the best looking stuff. So that's pretty we want to have good quality and teach our farmers to have good quality produce. We want to, I need, we need, to, we need to go and help out and assist our farmers, all the government program that's out there that, that help them. And uh, anything else, I mean, it's just anything else that you need from me. 
Now I'm a one-on-one -on -one man. I, I really, I'm not a person that likes to talk in front of a lot of people, but I would teach you, but I'm just a one-on-one -on -one man. That's what I like. I've been doing this stuff. I did it 32 years for Allen Cannon Company. We was the, we was the lowest paid. I was the lowest paid personnel when I started there. And when I left there, Allen Cannon Company, I was when I started, I was started out as one a dollar sixty two cents an hour. Don't try to figure back because it's going a long way back, long way back. But when I left there, I was making a hundred thousand a year because I stayed there. You got to be stood fast in what you do. If we stay there and do what, we, don't worry about nobody. We worry about ourselves. Do what we can for ourselves, and we can make it. And uh, anything else you need to ask for me or need to know about me, uh, I'm going to leave my phone number and an address and email address, and then you can talk to me anytime you get ready. But I would do anything to help our farm. I know I want to help 30 minutes, but uh, I mean, uh, I yeah. hope. Go ahead. Oh, somebody want to ask a question? Well, I was going to ask you to talk about those those uh, certifications and maybe you can hit on uh, what type of packaging requirements for different produce, like clam shells, okay. med bags. But definitely talk about those certifications because the farmers are going to have to have those when they go into certain processing facilities. Right. Markets, that's, anything. That's, can you, can what, you expound on that? I, that's, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier about the certification. That's during the, the winter months. We teach classes. We teach from the field all the way to the uh, process facility how we have to have recalls. You have to have mock recalls. You have to have, uh, there's a way you had the product, pick your product off the field. You know, you can't let nothing touch the ground. Uh, we teach that all in our classes. We teach the classes that the government required for us to teach to make, uh, for people to pass the inspection. Now, the inspection, you really, you do most of your own form of your own guidelines. And when you make your guidelines and the USDA man come to do your inspection, now you got to go by the guideline that you, that you make. You, if you don't go by the guideline that you don't, you made, you ain't gonna pass no inspection if, uh, unless now when, um, uh, Pest control. I'm gonna use pest control as an example. In a processing plant, if a, a inspection comes from California to your processing plant, and the first thing they're gonna ask you for is pest control. If you do not have a pest control, they turn around right there, you're gonna flunk the course. You don't flunk the course because you gotta have pest control. And it's something that's above our control in a processing plant. I mean, let me good. In a process, if a, you outside doing your inspection, you know, you got to go in and outside. You got to have barriers for birds and stuff not to come in. If you out there and you in the inspection walking, if a bird fly up under there, sorry, Mr. Percy, you are uh, muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. No. Thank you. Okay. 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 Did you understand what I was saying? If when you, if you when you're doing your inspection, if you, uh, you know, you have to go inside and outside. You got to have pest control. You got to have, uh, you have to teach teach your employees all the rules and regulations. Wash your hand. Wash station. How important it is. If you get cut. And if you get cut or you sick, you cannot work around food, cut, or sick. If you get cut any kind of way, you need to go to your supervisor and let them know so they can, you need to be reported and then you will be sent out. You can't stay there because you, some people, uh, their blood is contaminated. You have to learn how to, we have to learn how to get it up, clean it up, and that way you won't be humble to other people. Okay, so um, these are these these sound like your uh, basic GHP GAP uh, rules, right? 
Yeah. Right. All that, listen, all rules come together. It might be in a, in a different form, but it's right. all yeah, yeah, all up. Yeah. Okay. And then if 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 any if anybody do not understand what I'm saying, I'm gonna be having a we'll be having a class in February. We're gonna have class in February. If you would like to come down, we'll teach you the whole from the beginning, from the field to the ending. We'll give you the video. We make we make videos. We'll give you on a jump drive that you can go back and 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 teach your farmers how to do things and in the proper way in the handling the food. Well, how long how long is these certifications good for? Is that an annual thing? No, no. Certification lasts for one year. One year, okay. But every, yeah, you got, they have to come every year. They very very expensive now. They very tough. It's cost it's cost us nine hundred and seventy five dollars to inspection. But if you got three farmer out there doing inspection, try to get them all the same day. So. It'll be vied up between the three farmers. The more you get out, the better it is there. <laughs> That's right. The more you got out there, the better it is for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of farmers just don't have the money, but there's an organization out there will help farmers to, you know, to to pay for that. But you know, you have to do this stuff every year. But if you got a building that you if you were taking some some course and training courses, and then if you don't get certified, you still can take them to like us, for instance. But I'm 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 USDA certified. You can take to that bill, and then it, it still ships your stuff out to certain mm -hmm. stores. Now that's where some people and some stores don't require all that. Everybody, everybody is different and require, but it is better that a farmer have some class and try to get certified. That goes mm -hmm. a long way. Your price, Mr. Baldwin. Can you um, can a farm say uh, say for instance, if a farmer doesn't have the insurance that they are starting to require now, can can they ride under the processing facilities insurance if the processing facility manager has, has came out and checked that farm? Because a lot of farmers might not can afford certain insurances. So can they ride kind of be kind of ride under? The processing facilities insurance. So it's, it's, everything is under the process because we respond for everything when we when we take their product. That's when it's so important. That's when I go out, I go out to each farmer, make sure they understand the rules. You know, we everybody got rules and regulations. We got to follow the rules. They're doing what they need to do, and then a lot of people that don't have insurance. I mean that that have been showing. Sometimes people can't afford it and showing. So if you can pick it back up somebody else that could help you, you know, in some small farmers, they had just a small product, you know, a little small stuff to keep them moving forward. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Can, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. And um, where 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 can our farmers and the people that's that's attending now, where can they get that information? Uh, on that class that you guys are going to teach? Uh, uh, you can call, you can send me an email at pbaldwin at allcorn.edu uh, and, 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 and get on the class. Uh, I, I don't, we may have, end up having some Zoom classes because, you know, after this corona, the, the, the virus came along, things changes, you know. It, it, we might have to do some classes online. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, we do we online. I mean, even though I mean, if 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 if, if one of your farmer called me and asked me first, I need to, to class I, me, I would teach them over the phone. You know, I was I could have one on one. I do one on one if I have to. We still there. Yes, we yes, are. <laughs> I got a question from the chat for you, Percy. Yes, uh, ma'am. Mr. Hector asks, do you happen to know if some wholesalers are able to call share for certification? Is there any way to come down on that price? Uh, sometime in what state you in. I don't know. You know, different states do different things. Now. You know, everybody might not be in Mississippi, you know, like uh, uh, some organization will help you to uh, come down up that price. Like I say, if you got, the more you got, the cheaper the price, the more you got coming. 
if you if on that same particular day now. Uh, yeah. when we when we first started, it didn't cost but uh I think it was like seventy six dollars an hour. Now it's about hundred and thirty one dollars an hour. And it started the time they leave Jackson, Mississippi coming to the The quicker you do your inspection, the quicker they get back, the better off you is. That's when you need to have all your rules and regulations done. Have your, you got a cheat sheet. They send you a sheet that you check off sheet. If you got all your stuff, when the inspection come and you open your book, and when they going through, you got everything in your book that you're supposed to have, you have no problem. Then you go out in the field and you demonstrate how you harvest stuff. You know, you don't put nothing on the ground, stuff like that there. You got your water sample, you know, you uh some people got a miss of water, you depend you might have to go to the health department, get to water loans, you got all the rules and things in your book, you'll have no problem. Okay. We also have a question that says, Do you know if any wholesalers in the past are currently provide packaging for growers? Or is it dependent on the wholesale? We I have never seen that. We have to buy our own we have to buy our own packaging to go in there. We have to buy our own pack. But now, this is the way we work. I can tell you how we do. If Please. a farmer, a farmers want to do their peas in, in March, Mississippi, they bring that peas to me. I pull out this farm for them. We, from the to bad, we do the labels. We do the whole, all the farmers got to do is drop it off. But I let the farmers know that it's the way it works. You get paid by sellout bush. I let my workers know that if it's 16 ounces goes in that bag now in process, if the bag calls for 16, you can have 15, nine and they won't work. 15, nine, you go to a store, they're going to reject it and send it back to you. And then when you send that stuff back, the farmer's still going to want their money. So you got to try to do it right. The farmer's going to have to get their money because you accept their peas now. And when you put on that paper, when they get that, when you ready to ship it out, you put on that paper, that farmer had 50 bushels. That farmer expects to be paid for that 50 bushels. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Everybody, uh, we got some good questions in the chat. If anybody else have any questions, uh, feel free to ask your questions. If you would like to come off mute and ask a question. Um, this will be a good time. And meanwhile, I have some questions as well for you, Percy. Um, if anybody comes off mute, I'll for sure um, let you get the next question. But um, but I mean, if, let me say this. If a person has a question, make sure you put my phone number in the chat. But if you, I mean, things are so, so many, you got so many people out there, telemarkers and stuff. If you just always text, because I might not answer the phone, I tell them I don't know. I'm just gonna be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Just text me and say you need to you with a program you want to ask them, we need to talk, then we go from there. Got me. Okay, what's your phone number? I can put it in the chat for everyone. Okay, it's uh 662 207 9288. All right, I've got you. You got it. So email. you need the email address in case somebody wanna email. Uh, somebody might want to see uh, I need to send them some pictures of how we do things I mean mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to help somebody we appreciate you we appreciate it I, I, I mean, my job is to help somebody so when I'm going to the other side that he lay right there he hopes somebody I want to help somebody all right everybody well, let, wait, let, me, let me sit here now I know I, I know I might have, you know when I was coming up as a little boy we used to go to, we didn't have no TV. There was three of us. We didn't have no TV to watch. We would have to go to other people's house to watch TV. And, you know, we kids. Kids going to be kids. You at somebody else's house, and they cut the TV off because you want to watch something. It was their TV. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if I ever, ever get to be a man, my kids will never go through that. We don't want no farm to suffer, and we don't want nobody to be left behind. I'm through now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello? 
Yes, that's a blessing, Mr. Percy. We appreciate that. Everyone, we, we heard it here. If you have questions, you can reach out to him directly. We've got his phone number in the chat, and we've got his email in the chat. Here's a question um, from the Raffi team. When is wholesaling not a good option? Do you ever have any scenarios where, you know, it may not be the best choice for a farmer? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes a uh, wholesaler will try to downplay you. Mm -hmm. I always, I mean, I always try to have. I mean, when you when you when you're trying to sell stuff, have two or three people you're trying to sell to, and then you use the best one because people think you just using them. They will downplay you. Mm -hmm. They think you can't sell to nobody. You have to reach out to other people. Well, in other words, what I'm saying, you can reach out to other people. You might have to say, "Well, I can't take that price." You might call. Well, I'm gonna call tomorrow and speak to the person. They might give me a better price. Just do your research. Go out and see what you can do. Just don't stop it no one somebody. I always have a ram in the bush. Do that make sense what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we appreciate you. We have another question from the chat. Uh, what are some great sites for knowing how to come to a buyer with fair prices? Um, he's familiar with AMS terminal markets through USDA, but do you know of any other sites? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, you can look at today. You know, every day prices change every day. If you can, if you can go on the, uh, you can get USDA, or uh, you could go. See, a lot of people don't understand, don't know that you could go direct to Walmart buyer. I ain't talking about the, the main man, the man that buy their produce. And get and build your relationship with that person, and and Walmart will allow them to buy your product. Now, a lot of people don't know that. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're trying to get a good product. I mean, if you're on a team, that you can go direct to certain people, and they'll buy your product direct without going through the big all the other process and stuff. But you got to go to the produce manager. Do you understand that? You have to go to the produce manager. I could. Like me personally, I could get more stuff sold at a good price, but I got to have the product. I got to know I'm going to get the product. I'm going to Augusta, Georgia on Thursday. The farmer came down in December and told me that what all he can do, but I need to go see it for myself. That's right. I'm going to let someone in the audience come off me and ask you a question, Mr. Percy, okay? Okay, I hope I can answer. <laughs> I try man. all right Hector you can ask your question Percy thank you for, thank you for the information and I guess sort of just an add on to that particular question that I had asked um, that was kindly sort of presented was the have you heard in the past of farmers who are already selling collectively trying to set a price so that it's more of a forced component for there to be a fair price for buyers or for the growers in terms of like what the buyers are sort of in this many ways, like you've said, are trying to lowball you in many ways. And so therefore your sort of suggestion was finding different wholesale buyers, but have you heard in the past with a lot of the other growers collectively trying to, um, you know, just slightly insinuate that, you know, we, the, the growers themselves would like a fairer price for their, their crop. The growers themselves need a fair price. I mean, that's why we have uh, uh, people like me come in and, and try to help you get a fair price. Because, I mean, if you don't, un if people don't, under a lot of people don't understand uh, what a fair price is. Some people ain't got to understand, some older farmers, you know, they, they, they people would downplay them on prices, but there are, I mean, you have to do research and go out to different farmers, different stores. Now, you can sell yourself local. A lot of people don't understand that, but you can sell a lot of stuff local. You can make a lot of money selling stuff local. You can make a lot of money in farmer's market. Now, me, let me give you an example. Like me, for example. Now, I help these farmers down here everywhere I can. On Saturday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I be at a farmer's market with a farmer. I'd be in Rome, Mississippi, poorest, ain't no, they ain't got nothing store there. They buy everything. But I tried 
to make sure they get a fair price. Those poor people. We, I, I, I'm a person like this. At the end of the day, I want to be fair. And when I go home, I want to go to sleep. I don't want the devil talking to me, trying to tell me you made a fool out of somebody. I want to try to do as fair as I can with people. Right. Mr. Person, can you um, kind of to add to this question, um, with the guys, uh, with the guys, in, with the men and women up there in the Mississippi Delta, the ones that that sell as a as a as a as a as a cooperative, can you speak on that and like how how their prices could be better because they are uh, selling in a, in a as a as a group? Okay, your price will be better if you in, in a cooperative if you can meet the standard that a the buyer won't. They don't want nothing one time. They want it every week. If you can follow it every week, they buy whatever you got. Do you understand? Now, see, something you can't buy. You can't have nothing for one week and don't have it no more than the next three weeks. Now, it got to be in a process that you can buy. You can furnish it. Your, your group can make sure you can do it every week. Your group. This guy may grow uh, green beans, and he's gonna come. I'm mean, using it for example. His green bean gonna come out. This week, two weeks later, this man gonna come off. You can, you know, you gotta be a pattern. You gotta keep that pattern in order to make that money. There. Right, right. You, you gotta follow a pattern. You can't, you know what I mean? Even though, if then if you can't follow the pattern, you might well call to where, let me call down here in the Delta. I might get a person to take this hundred bushel and then he can, you know, somebody else over there needs so many peas or butter beans or whatever it is. That we can work together. We got to work together now. You want to make it work. The bottom line is, you got to work together because you got to have enough product. Right, right. Yeah, and that's 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 the whole uh, benefit of being a part of a a, um, a, a group a cooperative. Um, yeah, yeah. And I know I know down here in Central Mississippi, our our cattlemen, all our black cattlemen came together here in, in a Rankin County and they they formed their own co-op and they were able to get better market price for that their right. calves. Yeah, you, you, can furnish, as long as you can furnish stuff, you can, but you That's right. you, you got to be, be able to produce, I mean, furnish the stuff, make people so they can get it and they need to right. that. That's the way you do that. Right. But but as a team on the produce now, we got to come together, Otis. We really need to come together and meet as a overall cooperative, like you, the head of that, you should be able to call me. Your farmer said, "Well, you know, working with this farmer said, well, we got to figure out what we need to do." You see, you slacking over there. So I'm gonna call a person over there. That way, we can take this stuff. We need to keep moving forward. We need to go to the USDA personnel and try to get these farmers a, a cooler truck because you know you got to have a cooler truck. And they, and everybody ain't got that, but we need to have some kind of cooperative. We need to get together. And form some kind of co-op that we really can help people show them that it happen. Right, yes, sir. Percy, could you yes. let us know some common mistakes that people make when trying to get into wholesaling? Uh, one of the common mistakes in wholesaling: you somebody trying to undermine you. You're working with somebody, or you're working with another co-op, and you tell them what you do. And then they go and try to, well, what I mean by undermine, they'll go and try to, if you say you want, let's say you want $15 a bushel for your peas, and then you you tell your co, you know, the people that are working around you, what you're trying to get, they go undermine you, they will tell them they want 13 they underbid you. But we need to be working together. We all need to be on the same page. Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? For sure. Uh, do you have any more advice for people who would like to get into um, this? Uh, actually, let me go ahead and let Miss Andrea come up and ask her question. Okay. Hello. Welcome to our Hi. Uh, hey, thank you so you much. Um, Mr. Percy, this is really, really nice. You're reminding me of my um, my grandfather. So I really uh, great, great grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, no, you're not that much older than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. But I was wondering. Um, my uh, sister and I have a small farm, and and um, this year we're doing our second year 
of a farmer's market. And we want to make sure that um, in keeping with what you said, the presentation of things um, and ensuring that we are harvesting things at um, the right time. Now, this past year in 2023, we would get up as soon as the sun came up, about 5.30, quarter to six, and harvest everything and then go to the farmers, be at the farmer's market by eight o'clock. Is there a better way to do that? Or is um is that what we just we, we just have to do it that way, ensure that things are cleaned and um for a good presentation? Will you just talk about some of the um best practices for harvesting? Okay, let's you know, each product of got shelf life. All our product got shelf life. You know, tomatoes, uh and my last. Fresh tomatoes now. Fresh tomatoes uh, last about seven to ten days. You know, fresh peas last seven to ten days. But you got to keep them cool. You got to keep the field heat out. That's the most important thing when you get your veg. Make sure you get the heat, feel heat out of them. Uh, you know, everybody don't have uh, uh, air conditioning, you know, the, you know, they could keep their stuff cool. But if you could pick the stuff in the early in the morning, late in the afternoon and put them up on the fan. And and when you put them up on the fan to keep them cool, you got to put them on a pallet because the air got to flow to them. You just can't, uh, you just can't stack them on top of one another. I had a, uh, I had a farmer, uh, I told him how, they bought a truck. See, this is how people do it. He bought a truck, an air-conditioned truck. And it was out of Alabama, and I told them how to bring the peas to me. But the man they bought the truck from told them, you could stack the peas on top of one another. Just stack them on the floor, on top of one another. The first mm -hmm. one they brought to me, they stack them right on the pallet. The air could blow through. You understand? Follow me up. The air could blow through them, and it was consistent. And then the next month, they followed his advice, and they stacked them on the floor, and the air couldn't go through them, when peas or vegetables start breaking down, they ain't gonna stop now. When they got to me, I had to dump them off. So we have to, like I said, it, uh, you we see how many days this stuff left, but you gotta get, make sure you get that fear heat out of. Where, where, where are you from anyway? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, you're a long way from me. <laughs> <laughs> but but your your advice is still good no matter where, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, I mean, I I get stuff from Tuskegee now. I get paid from, from Tuskegee. I go down there uh, and visit those people and try to help them. I try to help you know farmers uh, 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 to prosper. We 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 need to. That's what we need to do. We need to prosper. We want everybody to make some money now. Everybody needs to make some money. That was when an I, excellent suggestion. Was the, when I was a, when I was coming up in the Allen County, coming, I was young. We didn't have nothing and stuff. Mr. Allen owned Allen Candy Company. I told him Reebok shoe was out at that time. You know, we a lot of folks don't know what Reebok is. But they was a popular line shoe. But I let him know. I didn't care about him being rich and not being poor. I said, Mr. Allen, at some point, everybody child need a piece of cake. And they need to pay a rebound. I ain't said women well, get cake every day, but they need something every once, every once in a while. So everybody needs something. It's enough room in this world for everybody to get a little piece of cake. Enough, it's enough Amen, room. Mr. Percy. <laughs> I ain't no preacher, about it, but, but I wanted to make sure y'all, you can sell yourself. Like I said, if, you, if you're having problems and if anything I can do to help you guys or whatever I need to do, uh, I, I have connections in different places that people might uh, could take those stuff. And then, you know, and another thing you got to look at too now, let me tell you this here, I'm going to come from the market. It depends on the location you carry your food to. You might say, well, what do you mean by that? If you go in a neighborhood that don't have nothing, don't have much, you know you're going to have to lower your prices. But you go in a neighborhood that do have something, you can raise your price. Now, it was an old, old man told me one time, he said, Percy, he said, you see me tomatoes right here? 
He said, I'm going to sell these cheap. And I'm going to sell it. You make enough on the other to offset it. Try to always offset your stuff. He said, because when you're growing veggies, he said, you got to have enough for the thieves, enough for the worms, and enough for yourself. <laughs> and enough for the birds. Now, they're going to get some. Does that make sense what I'm saying, T? Make a lot of sense. <laughs> Yes, it does. Thank you so much. I really like the suggestion about the pallets, though. Um, I didn't, my sister and I knew that we needed to keep things cold, so we tried, uh, cool, so we um, harvested things and put some things in the refrigerator, but I think it may be better to use. No, 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 no. If you, if you, I know you have, don't put them directly in the refrigerator. Okay. Cool your fan and cool them down, get the field heat out of them before you put them in the refrigerator, because okay. they're still, still warm. You cool them down, and then you put them in that last room. Yes, sir. Thank you. And and let me tell you, I'm going I'm, to I'm be quiet. I know you're about tired of me. You can take some, you can have some peas in your car. It's, let's use this for example. You It's 70, it's, let's say 92 degrees. Your air conditioning ain't working, and you don't have your window cracked enough. If don't know air, get to in through your through that product, when you get where you're going, when products start breaking down, it ain't gonna stop now. You have to either cook it, can it up, whatever. It ain't, it ain't gonna stop. So if you can get the field heat out and keep it cool as you can, and keep it spread out, it'll work. It'll work. And then another thing I want to put on: when you go to the farmers market, make sure you have your stuff is pretty as you can. I mean, if you might have to go to some of these Dollar General stores, I don't know if y'all have Dollar General now, and get some yeah. stuff, put your product in, and have it looking fantastic. You want it to look the best. And people will buy all your product now. I don't have any problem with these farmers down here selling their product. Right. Okay. Um. So we have a, a evaluation, uh, Mr. Percy, that we're going to gonna pop up. And we can give you the results of that too. Um, we we we're not cutting off yet, so you guys can still ask questions. I'm sure you, you guys might have some more important questions, but we still just wanted to pop this up because we see that just in case we lose a few people, we wanted you guys to see this. And so this this is something that we can take back and, and use um, to see how we can keep improving on uh, on the information that we're trying to give to you. Okay, um, while you guys are filling out your evaluations, let's keep the questions rolling. Mr. Percy, we have a question in the chat from Calvin. He asks, what type and size of refrigerated truck would you recommend? It's going to, it's going to determine how much product you try to get through. You don't want to get no oversized uh, 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 truck. You want, to get, you want to get a truck that fits your needs. I mean, you wouldn't want to get a truck you wouldn't want to get an 18 for the truck and you need a 16 for or whatever. So uh, you're not gonna do with 12 paddles. Uh you know, it, it comes in all different sizes. If you know you're not gonna be shipping out, you don't want to have no excess amount of stuff that you had to buy gas for to get. You want to use the, if you not know you were gonna use the four pallets, for example, you get a truck that fits six paddles. So one day you might get six paddles. If you know you need 12, get a head C mile. You know you need for the fold, you know, you got to get a big one of the big trucks. You have to get the stuff that fits your need. So, I mean, I don't know what you what your need is. I don't know what you get out, but you you get stuff that fit what you know that you working with. Does that make sense? Yeah. But now, don't get me wrong. I might have to come to North Carolina. You in North Carolina too? No. Yes, sir. I, I might. I ain't never been to North Carolina. I might need to come down there. <laughs> but Allen can come had a, a a building. They had a plan in North Carolina. But I didn't get a chance to come down there. Mr. Person, what um? Here's a, here's a question. I was somebody texted me. They said um because I, I I get this question a lot. How hard is it to start your own processing facility? As far as our vegetables, like is it 
is it is it uh, worth it? Which I guess you would have to do some type of yes uh, SWOT uh, but, analysis uh, to, yeah, to know it, that. But and what type of process facility you trying to? They, somebody, they said a uh, vegetable. Yeah, vegetable. Is it going to be fresh vegetables in the can, or you want to do cannery? You want to do just process? Right. He didn't. He he didn't. He didn't ask that question. He just said, I guess, just overall. I guess I'm 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 saying a place where he can do kind of value added and fresh. So let's say it, if a farmer is gonna have a facility that they want to cut and bag and sell, and also have space for uh, where uh, have the capacity to do value added like canning and jarring and you know stuff like. That. Okay, let's do it this way. If you're doing cannery. And you're doing, I mean, you know, some stuff's not going to match. You know, you can't have the meat there. You ain't going to have no meat. You got to have special. Uh, right. Uh, right. Okay, SDA people that are all good. But if you do canning, you don't want to, you know, there's certain things that you got to learn that, that you can't put together. If you're doing fresh peas, that means you, you're, you're not using no hot water. You're not, uh, uh, let me give you an example. If you were doing, Fresh peas and then one of your peas fall on the floor. Would you throw it away? If it fall on the floor, would you throw it away? You wouldn't have to throw it away because for several reasons it hadn't been cooked. Bacteria might be on the floor, but when you cook the food, the bacteria is on the floor. But if you had processing, if you were processing this on the floor, you know you got to throw it away. You got to show what you did with it, how you disposed. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you were, if you if you could do a shed, I mean, you know, you can do your shed to keep yourself cool. You know, uh, you don't have to if you keep your pee cool, you don't have to sell your pee in three days now. I mean, they can stay in the hood for three or four days if you keep them cool. As long as you keep them cool. What's the what's the uh, cooling you temperature? The, what's the, you don't want what's the, what's the best storage temperature for? Uh, like uh, maybe sixty uh fifty eight to sixty two, but you okay. don't want. What you want to do after you get the field, you got to get the field out there first. Then you they'll stow there, and then when they sit there for two or three, this is what I do. Let me tell you what I do. When farmers bring their peas to me, I put a fan on them, cool them down. I put them in the cooler, let them sit for a couple of days, and those peas shell out like popcorn. You know how popcorn do? Them peas shell out. You can let me tell you another little secret. A lot of people don't know. You can have your peas and they be half green. You know, when you pick them with a pea picker, you're going to pick everything. But if you let them cool them down, put them in the cooler, let them set, those green peas will shell out. But if you if you take those peas and put them in the shelter when you bring them in, you, you're going to lose all your money. And they, they will not shell out. They will not come out that hood. Hmm. A lot of people don't know that because I learned that from experience, you know. Right. Because you write something on paper that don't mean it work. You got to have experience with stuff now. You got to have both. You need both of them now. You need the experience. I mean, you know how it go, but you need the experience. You need somebody that did that that can help you. But what it do for others might not do for you. But you, it, but by you doing, listen, you can learn for yourself how to do things. Correct. Okay. Go ahead, Miss Andrea. You have a question. As a follow-up to, um, I think it's Otis's question, just around the processing um, facility, um, Mr. Percy, I know you do um, peas, but just to do a fresh produce uh, processing area, say we just want to um, be able to, I guess, wash and present process the fresh vegetables so that we can either go to a wholesaler okay. or now, a farmer's market and okay. now, maybe okay. have okay. the capacity to um, can, say, tomatoes. I, I only know how to can tomatoes and peaches. I, I ain't going through all my data <laughs> went through to, to can green beans. That's too involved. I just went through <laughs> tomatoes and peaches. That's all. Tomatoes <laughs> <laughs> and peaches. Uh, well, you know how to cook tomatoes, and you know how to you put them in jars. You put them in jars, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. You know. You know, okay. You know. It, you know. It's just like everything else. You know when you cook. Well, you know 
when you cook tomatoes and you put them in the jar, everything got to be cooled off at a certain temperature so long in, in the cooling water because, you know, you don't want bacteria. You know, when the, when you put it in a hot, if you put something in the jar hot, it what? It expands on it. You know, it'd be swollen mm -hmm. up. It's going to be hot to expand. But when you cool it down, it what? It tighten up. So you don't want, when you, well, you know how to cook. I mean, you know how to do it. I'm just trying to tell you that. I, mean, I don't know what I'm trying to tell you. You're a cook. <laughs> but I'm just saying, when you put them in a jar, it's expanding. It's hot. And when it cools down, it, 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 it seals itself up. And that way, you have to have your water at a certain temperature and not up to the jar so they won't suck that when it cool down, they won't suck that water over there. And then you contaminate your water. And then the stuff will start spoiling in the jar and blowing up and stuff mm -hmm. like that there. Because let me give you an example of what I'm saying. When I was we 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 in two in, two, in 1998, we started doing baked beans. And we didn't understand how to do baked bean? We can the baked bean. We put them in a retort. I mean, a stand-up cooker. They wasn't rolling. They were standing up when they were cooked. You know, everything cooked in a the can. They were standing up, and we sent them to the school in Tennessee. They called a the national guard out there because the can was blowing up because we didn't <laughs> what we didn't <laughs> we didn't we didn't lay them down so that they can cook all the way through. They cooked on top, but they didn't cook in the middle, and then it's when they when they got where they were going, they blowing them like like you were shooting a bomb. Boom. They had called the National Guard. They thought, and it was just some can with it. We learned from the my mistake. Wow. Wow. Okay. I've been through, I've been through some stuff. Make your hair fall off your head, and you pick fall off. You pick it up and put it back on. All right. Uh, <laughs> but, well, we want to. Uh, we 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 definitely want to thank. Uh, we want to thank you all. Um, thank you, Mr. Percy, for coming on to speak. Uh, we definitely got a lot of good good information here. Um, I do think that you're going to have a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails coming up soon. And also, I'm here for uh, right. Thank you. Thank you. And so we want to thank our farmers, everybody who attended. We had people um, that have already filled out their. Um, evals, and we definitely appreciate that. Want to tell you, thank you for taking time to do that. Thank you for tuning um, from our areas. Uh, I think we got a, a a good diverse group of uh, a geographical diverse group here. So we definitely appreciate that. That means that we're getting out there, and so um, we have our contact information that's uh, that's still here uh, that you can see now. So if you guys need to contact us, feel free. Uh, please take a look at our Farmers of Color uh, Network on our, our website. Uh, we do have a, uh, some programs and, um, and some funding opportunities that are coming up. We also have a, a newsletter that we put out too. And so um, we definitely want you guys to uh, tune in and stay connected to us. And um, so, yeah, I see people from Philadelphia here. So, wow, you know, that's a, that's a long way soon. So, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all. And so we're going to uh, wrap up here. I'm going to ask my coworkers if they have anything that they would like to say or anybody had any last questions or last statement that they want to make before we shut down. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Otis. So uh, I just want to uh, thank Mr. Pierce. It was amazing, and we, we learned a lot about all the process. And also, like, if you wanna, um, if you wanna get in touch with any one of us, we all are part of the um, Farmers of Color Network. Especially Bianca is the person in charge to get in uh, in contact with with farmers. We would be very happy if you wanna join us, and we also offer some other assistance with NRCS programs, with FSA loans. Otis, for example, helps out farmers to fill in and to apply for FSA loans. So yes, feel free to get in touch with us as well with Mr. Percy that he was very generous to share his phone number and email. And yeah, for me, that would be it. Thank you so, so much. I want to thank everybody for letting me, um, for having and listening to me. I mean, we uh, we only we don't only have people in Mississippi, we have, I get calls all over the state, everywhere. And I'd be more than happy to help anybody. Thank you, Otis. Thank all of y'all for having me. Yes. No problem. No problem. I appreciate you. 
Let me uh, thank Percy as well. We appreciate you. I just wanted to let everyone know if you enjoy the webinar and you'd like to join our Farmers of Color Network, you can go to our website, uh, rafiusa.org, and you can find the Farmers of Color Network tab. You can join. Um, joining will let you um, get on our newsletter, and you'll be one of the first to know about when our grants open up. We have uh, three grants opening soon. We have a beginner farmer grant an infrastructure grant for more seasoned farmers and also a grant for Caribbean farmers. So you can join the network, head over to our website, join the mailing list. So we'll join the newsletter so you can be notified when these grants open up coming soon. So thank you, thank you.